A lot of times we say Kaddish or Chazarat Hashatz and we answer Amen. And I realize that a lot of time what happens is that the Chazan doesn't say the Bracha in the same uh, timing that you say Amen. Means sometimes he does it a little bit later, sometimes he does it a little bit earlier. And then it happens that we say Amen a little bit before he finishes the blessing. That's a problem. It's Amen Yetoma. This Amen doesn't have a doesn't have a father and mother. That's how it's a, it's an orphan Amen. That's how it's called in, in Halakha. So always, always we have to listen. He finish the bracha, then we say amen. A lot of chazanim because they sing a little bit, so they say vein mu amen. You have to wait until he says amen, and then you say your amen. It's very important. So we does it correctly. And especially when we don't have a lot of people in the minyan, maybe only 10, 11 people, if you don't answer the amen, that's a problem. Another that's a problem. thing that I wanted to say is regarding Rabbein Utam. There's a tefillin of Rabbein Utam. Not everybody does it. But I don't know why it came to my mind today. There's a lot of people that are very old. And they, of course, put tefillin in their life. Because, you know, Chabad and everybody, even people that are not religious, they put them tefillin. But it could be that a person... Never in his life put Rabbein Utan. So I think it's a big mitzvah if you know someone that is, uh, let's say your father or your grandfather or someone that is old and he never put Rabbein Utan in his life, maybe it's a good idea to at least one time in his life to put him Rabbein Utan. I think it's going to be a big big mitzvah and it's good for him. And without a bracha, without a bracha, I think that's a good project to uh, to do. One time, one time without bracha, to say Shema Yisrael. Oh, Chadunay, Oramen, Amen, Chavu.